Hi, I'm Rich, I'm the Ringing Master here at Runcorn and I'm going to give you a bit of a virtual tour of the tower um, where all the magic happens. So here at the opening gates, if you want to follow me. This was the full churchyard until the graves were levelled many years ago when it was decided they were unsafe and it was levelled all the way up to the door. Uh, it's created a beautiful open area, you get lots of dogs visiting, lots of wildlife here, um, and the blossom is just coming off the trees. It's early spring, I will keep wandering down. There's usually some planters a bit further up here, just to create a bit more of a, a green hub in the middle of Runcorn town. We're right on the edge of the town here. Uh, we've got the Silver Jubilee Bridge and the Railway Bridge up on that side. So you can really see the tower as you come in by train or travel by road in and across the River Mersey, which is just over there. Got the got the main entrance to the church here on the right. Huge open body of the church. Um, one of the well, well, best churches in the area, I think, because massive open space, no pillars, beautifully open, nice and tall, um, a really well used space. But our little door is on the side there, where we head up the tower because it's a separate outside entrance. This is the only side, only side of the clock that is uh, shown. We're going to have the one face, rather than all around, it's the only one really in use. So have the original clock, it's still hand wound, and I'll show you its internal mechanics when we go inside. It's also a bit wrecked at the minute because of age, we do need to do it up, but that is later on in our project. Our main project at the moment is the bells themselves, which is going to need £75,000 worth of donations. So let's go inside and have a look at what we're working with. It's only a short staircase, it won't be long. It's about 60 steps to the ringing room. So this is our ringing room, where the magic happens. We've got all the ropes in here. Um, we're about halfway up the tower now. Um, down below us is the kitchen area for the church itself, which we use when doing refreshments for events like our Christmas concert six months ago. Um, and we hope to do that again this year, but we'll see. It um, depends on what we can do and who knows what will happen in the next few months. We have eight bells here, so we've got eight ropes. They treble and second around by you. Then we move on to the third by the door. We have to ring in the alcove. The fourth is underneath the clock case. Fifth is in the corner. Seven and eight in a straight line with it. And I've got the tenor here with me. This tenor is about 1600 weight, and all eight of them were cast together in 1851. And uh, they were cast for this church <clears throat> and for this particular tower. They're a little heavy for the size of the tower, it's quite small ringing room, it's not very roomy at all, uh, but we make do with what we, what we do. Um, there's been ringing going on here for centuries since the 1850s and before then, because the previous church on this site had a ring of five. The front four were smashed up, unfortunately, but the tenor of that ring, the heaviest one, is in Holy Trinity Church at the other end of the high street. Got a fair few peel records up, um, including one of the very first peels on the bells, and others celebrating various events as we go through the years. A number of names on those boards which 
still carry on today um, with their families. Uh, you'll see there's John Orme there. We've had wonderful legacy from him, uh, both financially and in books and other materials, his, well, chronicling the history of this church. Um, w. Allman is Walter Allman, the father of the current tower captain. There's also some bibbies on there and then another ringing family from this area. As you can see, we're affiliated to the Chester Darsten Guild. We're part of their mid branch. So this ladder leads up to the clock tomb with the original clock. Yeah. I'll go up there and switch the lights on so you can hopefully see a little bit. As you can tell, this ladder was used last year when we were decorating in here, which really needs doing again. Especially the wall behind you, and there's damp problems which have since stopped, but we could do with a bit of redecorating in here. So I don't know how much you can see. We've got the original clock mechanism in here from the 1850s. It is still hand wound. Um, it's done twice a week um, by a couple of us. We will do our bit to keep it going, keep it chiming. We don't have any quarter chimes, so it does mean there's only the hours and the pendulum to wind. The pendulum is just over here, hidden in this box. It tends to run a little bit fast, sorry, a little bit slow even, so we have to put it on a few uh, minutes each week. I'll probably come back and wind this later when we finish filming. It's a long way up to the ceiling here, um, a bit taller than most ringing rooms. It's about 20, 20 feet, 21 feet, something like that. Um, so it's particularly tall and narrow church, um, but it makes you have really good handling. All the bells, apart from two and four, have no guides. So it is a straight up 20 foot. Um, the second has a guide that is only there for helping us teach, really. To, if we are teaching, the rope gets thrown, it doesn't go as far as it would on one of these. And as we teach, we are, I'm right now teaching a few people here. Um, start off here, we tend to move around to the fourth, which is the into the clock okay so it has a de facto guide there and then we move on on to the other ones generally the fifth because that is the most sensible in weight and one of the nicer bells in the tower each one of them has their own quirks and i'll go around one by one shortly you can also see we have our own hand bells um they are worn out completely but maybe one day Got photos of previous bands up there as well, um, including John Orr, um, who on the centre of the picture, that's him there, the tall gentleman who left us uh, quite a sum of money um, when he passed, unfortunately passed away a year or two ago. And then Walter Orman on the far left, the current guitar captain Bill's father. A couple of those ringers are still around, I think, but I don't know. We've also got a couple more recent uh, certificates up there. When we ran for Ringing Remembers, we have a Ringing Remembers recruit here in Dale. Um, we did bring four Ringing Remem Remembers here, and last year we won a striking competition. The branch and the guild started a novice competition. We joined forces with Darsbury, and we won our heat, went forward to the final, and came home with the trophy, which is fantastic. Um, with these bells being so hard struck, it really does teach you how to listen and to strike properly. <laughs> so, I'll start over here at the treble. Um, it's our lightest bell. It sits in front of the details of the bells. It weighs just 500 weight. 
could do with a little polish, but it's an original brass plaque from when they were put in. Cast by C&G Mayers in Whitechapel. And we believe Whitechapel did the 1930s overhaul as well, but we are struggling to find any details on that. The treble is one of the bells, one of the two bells that sits on top on a second frame. Six on a lower frame, two on top, we'll have a look shortly. This one sits over in the corner, uh, and in fact sits where the pigeons have, have been getting in most of the time. It's got quite a sweet little note, it's actually quite in tune. Not too bad at all. And we are following uh, an, a little accident, we're looking at connecting our chiming rope from downstairs up to the treble instead of up to the hammer that it's currently on with the second, because the hammer accidentally got smashed. The second is one of the more out of tune bells, so why the chiming hammer on is on it, I don't know. Uh, it's a little out of tune, but not the greatest, but in fact when they're all rung together, they actually sound rather nice, especially when you're in changes. The third, one of our ringers can't ring this because he can't fit in this alcove. alcove. Um, and a number of people do whack their hands here. Um, and one person can bang their head as well, he's really tall. Um, it's also one of the more tricky bells to ring because of the draw on the pulleys. Um, and it rubs slightly. We can't, we've put new pulleys in, but we can't eliminate the rub and the draw. So we've minimised it as much as possible. We are we are keeping an eye on where on the rope, and you also hear the hear the third from behind you because it comes straight down the staircase rather than through the ceiling to get around its sound. Fourth is notoriously our most deep set bell. Until recently, we've started putting these little blocks of wood into the slider run just to stop it going over quite so far. So any soft wood, um, we're trying it out to see if we want to put anything more long term in there, uh, just to help people pull it off even easier. It's still a little deep, but rather than hanging from it, it sounds all right. It's got a really nice hum to it as well. I'll open this door so you can hear them even better when I do the back four. Now the fifth is our cracked bell. There is a crack, we're not sure how long, um, it needs to be test or sound tested. Um, it's less than a foot, but it's cracking the crown. It can be welded and sound weld are going to be contracted to do it. It's going to cost about three grand to do. Um, but this is our cracked fifth. says. Um, the sixth is one of the trickiest bells in the tower for rope sight because you're in a straight line with five and seven. You have to have eagle eyes and look both ways at the same time. It's really tricky um, and really quite difficult especially if you're in call changes and ringing away duh, 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 six to seven. It's a little tricky. This one also has a habit of knocking its slider out, um, which is the pin, the slider rotates on the pivot pin, has worn. So if you go up too far at backstroke, it can knock the slider out. But because there's no sound chamber between us and the bells, we can hear the dunk of the wood as it falls out. So we know when we don't try to set it. Although it only happens about once a year and we can fix it. We are, gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to see what we can do when ringing resumes and we can go up and have a look with a few of us. As they get heavier, of course, they get harder to strike. <clears throat> Seventh is, like second, it's one of the more out of tune ones, but we do what we can. <clears throat> Um, this one you are stuffed into a tiny little corner um, with our window opening device. Um, the windows are actually made of perspex rather than glass, but shh. 
the original ones got smashed out. You can hear the twang in that. Not the nicest. And our final one, our big one, is the tenor. Um, 1500 weight, three quarters of a ton. Um, it takes a little bit of getting going, this one. So I'll be tight. Um, we've made sure we pull the clock hammer off so that nothing goes wrong. We've had one hammer bust, we don't want another one. The clap pegs are very as well. trainees which was um, originally built by one of the workers in the shipyards when one of our ringers was working there it was absolutely unique um, he must have done it in his spare time but it's a marvelous little thing and this chunk here is a stone chimney it leads to outside from the old coke boiler that was in the basement underneath this tower where steps lead down to from outside um, we are hoping I get later on to get this removed create a little more seating around here so it's a little more comfortable for everyone. But we work with what we've got, unfortunately. Right, we'll head up to the belfry, um, where the bells themselves are. They are all down, I made sure they were before we started filming. Um, they are staying down, because are, we are in lockdown and won't be able to come in for a while, but it helps to have a look every now and again just to check, because we have had massive pigeon problems Back when you used to ring six and seven, you used to get pigeon luck fall down onto your head, which was horrible. Um, it's all cleaned up now, it's a lot better, and when we start ringing again, we'll hopefully do a massive deep clean once more to make it even more hospitable. So, if you'd like to follow me up to Belfry, it's just another 20 foot. Just taking off the safety sign. We have to make sure we have safety signs up um, so people don't come wandering in and end up in the belfry accidentally. You can immediately see these steps are a lot less worn than the ones on the lower section. Because we haven't been up them as much. But usually it's running up them to check if things have broken and fixing them. Now the lighting up here is not good at all, but we do what we can. So we've got our all new pulleys fitted. Um, the only bit of new wood that is in here. Um, you can see other bits and pieces have been left around. Um, we've got new aluminium ladder to take us up onto the top. It's their bird meshing, bits of broken wheel. And then we have come up underneath the second as well. So we've got this uh, learner bell. You can see the clapper is well rusted. We were giving it a bit of attention a couple of years ago to just make it a little easier. You just see everything is worn out. The hammer, the hammer used to hit the inside of the bell, so it hit the outside of the bell from this pivot here. Um, but when we had a little accident and it took a small chunk out, um, but now that hammer has been taken off um, just to keep it, things safer. And we've got our little block of wood just here. Little block of wood that stops that going quite so far. For the fourth, we've got two and four next to us, one and three being above these two respectively. And there's our tenor over at the side with the clock hammer. We'll head up onto the top, if you want to follow me up, um, on our little ladder. Oops. 
really cramped way around, so hopefully my cameraman won't have too much trouble. Take an old view myself. Show you around up here. So we've got number three there to travel over at the side, and two and four below. You pop out um, onto the top by the third, and then you can go across four, five, and six. I'll just get across here. I'm on top of the sixth at the minute, fifth there, five, six, and seven all swing in the same direction, um, in, which is the opposite way to the tenor, which is down here. Um, if you go into that corner, you can see, see the tenor as I step off. And then over here in the corner, swings the opposite way to, the other, to these three. Um, one, two, three, four, swing opposite to each other. Um, all helps balance out the forces on the tower. Now you can probably hear some pigeons. There's a few. Um, these really tall louvers are a pain to keep the netting blown up with. You can see that there's a patchwork of various different nettings, especially over there and next to you there. there are loads of different types of netting, especially in the top pieces where it's been really difficult to get some netting in. You can also see the remnants on the bells and on the wheels and everywhere of the guano. Um, we've had to remove so much stuff from in here. Um, on the bottom layer, the pigeons just arrived. The bottom floor, there was nine inches to a foot deep and that is not exaggerating. Um, it was ridiculous. Uh, the bells sounded quite a bit louder in the ringing room from that. We've got a couple of missing louvers but we do, we do have the slates to fit the new ones. Um, we found them when we cleared the muck out underneath. Final piece. <clears throat> we are not going up this ladder. This is not safe. Uh, we will, in the midst of the renovation, take it down. But then we've got another section up the top. That leads into the spire. As you can see, corner piece, cornices are coming in. Um, that is all sealed off as far as we know. Um, and we will be trying to get that sealed off, sealed off fully, goes right the way to the top. The spire used to have a weathercock on the top <clears throat> until it came off and was stolen, unfortunately. But we have a new deal, we're hoping to raise a load of money to do these up. You see they are pretty, pretty worse for wear, um, especially here at the 7th, you can see the wheel is it's lost most of its shrouding. Um, the sixth floor had to be rebuilt about 10 years ago. Bit by bit, we're doing what we can to sort these out. Um, a new stay put on the third, all sorts. Bits and pieces, but everything else is all in one job. To get them through the trapdoors, through the middle. You have to come out in a very precise order. And we need your help to do that. Uh, I'm working on the grant applications, but they only help just like you can. Um, so whatever you can give, large or small, there's a lot of organisations out there asking for your help right now. Um, we are to, we were hoping to get this done for 2021, because the church was built or consecrated in 1851, hoping for the anniversary, but unfortunately we may well miss that due to this coronavirus crisis. But when we start ringing again, we will get going here once more and bring these ancient bells out to the town of Roncorn and hopefully keep this heritage alive thanks to your help. If you want to donate, please go to paypal.me slash 8 spliced. I'll post a link in the description for this video as well or check out the notes page for other ways to donate with gift aid. Every little bit really does help. Um, if you are interested in setting up a standing order of maybe a quid a week, um, please get in touch. We're always happy to chat if you've got any questions about what, what we're doing, uh, open days, visiting bands, visiting as a ringer or a non-ringer. I am 
more than happy to have a chat with you. It's usually me behind the social media face. In the meantime, please stay healthy, stay happy if you can, connect with people, just be kind and look forward to when we can ring out once more when ringing resumes. Thank you.